very happy to present uh, this presentation on 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing. The concept here is where materials can now be layered, very, very super fine layers to make any type of shape we want in thickness and now in materials that are in the hundreds. There's machines that can actually print over 108 different materials from clear plastics to solid metals. We're going to talk tonight about the changes and how this technology is affecting the whole world. Changes in food, yes, clothing, shelter, medical, and manufacturing. And if this presentation works, even one, one other. Okay, so let's begin. Hi again, I'm Adrian Pelkis. I am an inventor. I've already expressed that I've been uh, inventing things and I've been using this technology for 3D printing for, for many years. Uh, this is a... Uh, Boy, this is going to be hard. This is a uh, presentation I did back in 03 where I had invented these braces that had a metrology in it to measure if you're wearing them. Because if you wear your brace, you'll probably heal. And if you don't, you'll probably sue your doctor thinking that you know, he gave you the wrong prescription. Insurance companies like this idea. Anyway, 3D printing the devices allowed us to make samples without going through hundreds of thousands of what it would have cost in tooling to get it, something like that made. So I've had experience in this for, for well over 14 years which is why I'm here. Okay, 3D printing food. Um, we have an inventor in our group. He came to speak to us named Miguel, and Miguel invented the pancake bot. And yes, his kids wanted something fun uh, to make their pancakes with, and he took some Lego blocks and a ketchup bottle and uh, Duino and made a little controller and made the first prototype and made it work. He went on Kickstarter and raised over a million dollars for it. This product won awards. He was actually presenting it to uh, Prince Henry, uh, Harry in, in England in, in many shows. So it was, it was a great example. It was early on an uh, example of robotics making food products. So uh, we are seeing this sort of thing now. This is a biscuit. I'm going to actually try this. Um, might work. Hey. Yes, what do you know? Okay. So this is actually a, a method of making a biscuit and then they plant seeds in it and then they uh, water it and then it sprouts. And so you get a fresh biscuit with all kinds of cool things growing out of it as a tasty treat. All right. The uh, next thing here shows you, for example, they can take uh, fruit products, pelletize them and turn them into different shapes. So you can actually print an apple now, all right? Uh, eventually, you can make a food shape any which way you want. It's not eventually, it's actually now. An hour or so. The softer, the less dense the material, the faster it goes. Your hammer will be cold by then, but you make this first. Um, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, eventually all your supplies will just be shipped as goop and you can make anything in your own home just like a replicator. It's the basic materials for a replicator is what we're getting at. Uh, I'll show you a picture of how close we are. No, I mean for, the, for the food application, yes? you see these funny designs, but they seem mainly entertaining. Is there any nutrition? Yes, they're 100% nutritious. They can be made as nutritious as real food, any shape. Is, so the creative aspect hopefully adds to the... The, the lure. There's restaurants now that everything in the restaurant is 3D printed. The furniture, the utensils, the plates, and the food. Pretty soon the people too, I bet. But they're, uh, they're getting there. So this is a, there was a contest two years ago because they wanted kids to get inside and to come up with ideas uh, for 3D printing to make the Star Trek replicator real. And uh, how many of you remember Star Trek and there, in fact, was this idea that you say something and actually we are very close to this being real now, folks. Okay. Um, this is a restaurant. Again, everything in here is uh, made by a 3D printer. Everything that you see there is food was 3D printed. Uh, let me see if that link works because huh, this is going to be hard enough. Yep. Okay, clothing. Yes, believe it or not, clothing in every shape and form is now being 3D printed. Uh, this is a link to a video on that. And uh, let's see how that flies. 
3D fashion printing is a collaboration between Loughborough University, industry and brand to realise the manufacture of garments through additive manufacturing. The fashion and the textile industry is still very much based on 19th century technology. Um, and while it's been improved in terms of its efficiency and its output, um, it still produces a hell of a lot of waste. Um, and we have the opportunity here to radically change how textiles and garments are actually manufactured. Especially with LAFRA, and with Sophie that we get them to participate in this, it helps us to see that whether our DNA will match or not. And a lot of ideas that we started with gets dropped off. But only a few like this works and it excites and it makes us uh, really, really, really interested and want to be the person to make it wearable, to make it usable. The retail aspects could change radically in terms of personalization and customization. Um, 3D printing is a digital technology and if you link that up with something like 3D body scanning um, then you can quickly see how you can establish a system where you could get a tailored experience to a personalised garment every single time. The long term aims of the project are to really revolutionise how we go about designing and manufacturing textiles and garments um, and to create a more sustainable way to minimise our impact on the planet and its resources. So, customized fabrics and the whole idea is that you can, um, oh, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Okay, let's see if we get back. I'll remember that. Uh, so you can be uh, measured and have custom printed clothing, and I'm going to show you some great examples of this here. Yeah. So, whole idea is that we can now uh, adjust the textures, the thicknesses, the patterns, the colors. Everything about what you would think a fabric could be can be customized and have a variety all in one mold, all in one fabric, all in one part. So this is being applied now to shoes. Uh, there are fashion designers now putting on fashion shows. So everything from head to toe here, you're seeing shoes, clothing, hats, there's a company here in town called Feats. You might have seen them at the Maker Fair. They had a great booth there and they would give you a sample of some of the most comfortable tennis shoes you've ever worn. And of course you've seen the futurized versions of this showing how, well, when we have spacesuits and other needs that need to be made in space or in, in other locations, now with 3D printing we can custom make and modify these type of things. So. Uh, there's a variety. Nylons are easy enough to do, uh, and that's the, probably a staple for most of the fabrics, but uh, there's all kinds of blends with Dacras and other things that are... Uh, you, I don't think they're going to have a synthetic cotton, but they might someday. There's synthetic carbon fibers now that are amazingly soft, so uh, all these are 3D printed. Yeah. And now that we can blend in electronics, uh, a lot of these clothes will have biosensors, and you can have your metrics measured and stored it just goes on and on, the whole combination of melting clothing in with uh, the uh, internet world. You know. So, next thing is shelter. Yes, printing shelters. This was the world's first 3D printed house, completely 3D printed. The concept is this, it's basically like toothpaste, but it's cement and it comes out of a chute and it can uh, go around in patterns. You can follow a track and build walls. This is an actual bridge being built by 3D robots. Uh, this is actually a metal construction uh, and they join in the middle. The other examples here are they're creating pressurized spheres and domes for underwater or out in space use. Um, the whole, again, the whole idea is you have this gantry, a robot gantry that's XY 3D and it just keeps squirting and squirting and layer and layering until you've got the construct you want. They are, act oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. With all this, uh, you know, printing, do you think it will uh, take away from, uh, for example, we have Twitter? 
Yeah. Right. There are machines that do cur uh, the cursive printing now. And well, humans like what humans do, and their stuff that's made by machine will be cheap imitation knockoffs. So there'll still be a market for what's real, and then there'll be what can be done for, you know, other graphic purpose use. That yes, computers. There's fonts now already available that are like calligraphy. But uh, yeah, we have all kinds of skills that are going to be automated. Artificial intelligence will take over. That's, that's a whole other discussion. We should have a whole presentation on that. Let me see if I can just hit the button quick enough here. Um, this is the first office building completely 3D printed. And uh, let's see if I can get this to link up because it's a great picture of it. So the idea here is that this entire building was 3D printed. Of course, Dubai is leading the world. But look at that. Look at that architecture. Entirely 3D printed. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just kind of try the back button here again, see if I can at least stay in the presentation. All right, that's better. Yeah, we'll figure this out for the next time. Okay, gone through the clothing, gone through the uh, shelter. Now, shelter, it's interesting because you think shelter here on Earth. Well, sh shelters are going to be needed in space and other places as well, uh, as you've seen those examples. Um, the uh, 3D printing uh, has applications on Mars and other things that uh, they're now looking at picking up the regolith, the actual soil, the sand on Mars itself, and making construct out of that using 3D printing type material, uh, type technology. Medical. The market's expanding, ex exploding. Uh, it's because of this. We can now make bone, we can make cartilage, and we can make muscle. We can 3D print live tissues. That's an ear, cartilage. Cartilage was one of the easiest because of the density. It was one of the first ones that we became adept at doing was cartilage for nose, ear, those sort of things. Uh, Want to see that video? Standardized way in, in printing cartilage is uh, people uh, use hydrogels where cells are encapsulated in hydrogels and then uh, uh, hydrogels are printed layer by layer uh, and then a plaque uh, shape can be obtained that can be implanted in, in, in cartilage. One of the problem with the hydrogels is cells uh, encapsulated in hydrogels, they can't really uh, communicate with each other as hydrogels confine the, uh, the cells. So the cell to cell communication is very limited when cells are encapsulated in hydrogels. In our process, we don't really use any hydrogels. It's completely hydrogel free. It's completely scaffold free. So we confine the cells uh, in a very small area uh, that the cells uh, uh, bind together and then they uh, aggregate into uh, mini tissues. And then we print these mini tissues. Uh, and then mini tissues uh, can easily self assemble into each other. Uh, and then make a scale up uh, version of, of cartilage tissue. The bio ink is extruded in the tissue form and then we can make the bio ink in any length that we want. And then this gives uh, us a really long uh, bio ink uh, that we can stack those bio ink uh, uh, rasters layer by layer and then uh, after fusion we can easily get a larger scale tissue. Show you for many, a couple other examples. This is just amazing. Uh, to think our next generation is going to be able to have so many of their prosthetics and parts made custom to them, custom to you. So, if there's a suggestion on how to do this better, please teach me. <laughs> I'm just going to do it this way till I can get it there. Um, I'll skip this. Bones and tendons are be able to be printed and connected. Graphene is able to be blended in so you can have super strength bones. Thank you. So as you see here from head to toe, we're going through and making actual living materials uh, that are getting even more and more uh, complex every, every year. So uh, 3D printing is changing the medical world. Now, what it's uh, for robotics, of course, it's very helpful in making the parts. Uh, and then for making uh, missing pieces, if you uh, can be scanned, you can then print the part that will come in and replace the, the part that might be missing, the bone. Uh, one of the 
greatest assets now is that we can do uh, MRI scan and scan a part inside your body, print it out and let the doctor look at it so he can see what your defect is before he even opens you up. So he can predetermine the whole operation by having pre-mapped it. This is a little freaky, but <clears throat> if you wanted to see what your baby was going to look like before it was born, you can take those images and print it out before it's born and think what a, a keepsake you'd have before it's born going, here's little Johnny at minus two months old. Okay, so the idea is here is we are saving lives using this technology by doing things that were never possible before uh, and saving people that had ailments that were never before treatable, all because of the 3D printing. Okay, manufacturing. Uh, so I think it's, uh, isn't it UPS now has a service? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it is. I think the post office is coming out. The, the service is this. They have 3D printers now in their offices. So if somebody doesn't have to ship you a hard, heavy item. They can ship you the file, and then you go down, and instead of picking it up, you print it out right there on the spot. There are services that are now online that if you have the drawings and you ship them the print, they'll ship you 50 parts in a day. Now, these are parts that would have taken you months, if not longer, to have machined or cast. And again, you're making parts that in some cases you can machine or cast. Sometimes they're not as good, as, of course, as a machine part, but for many cases they are. So that's the state of where we're at right now. The actual technologies, technologies involved are, okay, doing this again. I, I do this a few more times, you won't have to see the rest of the presentation. Uh, polyjet uh, is how you do overmolding, which is when you have one material laid over another. Uh, a lot of these technologies are uh, specific to the type of material they are actually making. So when you have fused deposition or laser sintering, those are for the denser materials. Laser sintering is just that, melting the metal. They take a powder and they melt it with a laser and it creates the part. Uh, other of these are actual plastics that are extrude, that, that are almost extruded. They're, they're, they're printed as a molten form and then they harden. Uh, the, then depending on the plastic, there's specialties. Depending on the resolution, which is how fine those lines are, there are specialties. Depending on the strength, there are certain materials that some machines are better for than others because of the temperature. Uh, uh, 3D printing things that are carbon or there's some plastics that are very tough and they wear out the machine quickly. So there's, there's special processes for that. There's a couple of great firms here in town that are stocked with the latest state-of-the-art equipment from Stratasys. Uh, both Forecast 3D and Vista uh, is one. And it used to be called uh, Solid Concepts and Vista. Now it is Stereogenics, I believe. Pardon me? Poway. Poway, yes, they're in Poway. Um, uh, Right, Stratasys. They were bought by Stratasys. And uh, Dan Cyril is the local rep. He has spoken to our group before. Uh, and they're very happy to show you uh, all, the all the capacities. You go there, tell them what you want to make. They'll show you all the capacities. And in many cases, this could be your production solution because uh, the costs are coming down. Um, the trade-off is when the best advances for us inventors has been the uh, social media, being able to raise funds on Kickstarter and uh, 3D printing, because instead of having to spend tens of thousands on making the hard tools and injection molding things, uh, you get these things 3D printed now for, should be just hundreds of dollars. Your biggest expense really is going to be in the CAD drawings up front. CAD drawings are necessary. You just you can't sketch it. You do need a, a CAD drawing that uh, the machines run off of. So many different specialties here. They're all working quite well, and companies have them. Um, now, this has to work. I, I really want this to work. Please tell me this works because this is so cool. I'll send you the link there. Um, oh, yeah.
yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it, that's how close it is. You know, once it goes uh, public, that'll be huge. Okay, so um, that was the 3D here. All right, metal printing in midair. You got a little clue to this. Um, it's basically like welding, but it's a 3D robot, and it can actually make solid structures uh, very accurately. Uh, this isn't popping up. Okay, customizing cars. What they're actually creating here is three-dimensional decals. Like if you want scales all over your car, you can actually get these things printed out and put scales all over your car. And they're chromatic and they're colored. You could make wings. It's just, I'm sorry this link isn't turning out, but you can just go with your imagination on those things that you can create as coverings for cars. Yeah, cars. They are 3D printing the whole car from the ground up. Uh, uh, there's another version of that in here as well, so I'll show you. This is actually an automated taxi cab that is uh, running around Washington, D.C. now. And it's uh, fully autonomous, and the whole thing was 3D printed. This guy. Entirely 3D printed, autonomous little taxi, drives around. It's being tested in uh, Washington, D.C. right now. So you'll see more of that. Okay. Uh, additive metals metals are able to again create really strong and corrosive resistance parts and so they actually are now making rocket engines 3D printed. The company here in town is doing it, a few others are and these are actually able now to withstand the temperatures and pressures for rocketry. Uh, there are low earth uh, uh, rockets being made right now with 3D printed engines. Uh, and it's getting even more adapted in the main industry. This is a first 3D printed part that was approved uh, by the FAA for use in a commercial aircraft. Again, creating this part and this method saved so much time and money and it was so cost effective and it was a superior part in the end. That's the state of this kind of technology. So we're going to see it going into space as well. They already have sent up 3D printers up to the ISIS space station. The idea there is that they can instantly print tools and so on. Uh, and that was the first plaque that was made. And that was the very first tool, and now they're coming up with more and more things. Uh, I think I have the slide there uh, as well, starting to figure out how to send food materials up there to print, because the storage space is so much less in bulk than it is as process already processed food. Uh, other applications in space are for satellites. Um, there's an idea of about cocooning, which is a uh, 3D printing spider that will make cocoons and structures in space. Um, this next slide is actually the first uh, sample of something made from out of this world. It's actually a meteor, meteor dust that has got amazing temperature coefficients and it was ground up and it's being 3D printed to make structures now with capabilities no element on Earth can do. Now. Uh, there's concepts even more futuristic that will be able to actually manipulate molecules and, and really create things uh, using lights and things. So it's going to get even more sci-fi, folks. Uh, oh, the cocooner. Um, you got the idea. Uh, the real great application is in space because it costs so much to launch it off of Earth, but if you can move the raw materials up there and have robots create structures, they can create huge structures by building beams and webs and hooking it all up. So that's this idea here. Um, we're seeing, of course, the use on Mars, and I mentioned to you the idea of scooping up regolith and printing it. Well, actually, that was my idea. Uh, I supported this. I, I created this idea of a machine that would scoop up the regolith, it would actually a thin film coat it with metals, it would deposit it, and then it would center it. And these are how you can create uh, much denser structures. And uh, this little robot is autonomous with a solar cell on top. So the idea is we'll shoot these robots up. They'll create the structures. By the time we move up there, they'll all be shiny. Anyway, speaking of shiny, that was what the graphic artist did for us to make it shiny. Uh, it's called a sand spider, because that's what it sounded like to me. Um, Coming near the end of the discussion here, art, just use your imagination. If you can imagine it, you can 3D print it. It's the whole idea. Life itself, who knows, maybe. This is the end of the presentation, and what you're seeing here is an actual autonomous 3D printed robot uh, that has sensors and the electronics built in it, and it, when it, 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 has, it can react to things, and when it reacts, it sends a signal back, and these materials react to the electricity, and so it can walk, it can move, it can run away from things. 3D printed life. OK, 
Okay? Well, folks, that is, in essence, the whole presentation. I hope you learned something. I hope you're amazed. It's been very quiet, so I think uh, you, I can see a couple of you going, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Yes, this is the world we're living in. Imagine what it's going to be in just a few years. Okay.